Hello YouTube, welcome back to Kind Heart Homestead. My name is Ben, and as you can see here, I'm working on our property off-grid in the mountains of Virginia. I'm using a 55-gallon plastic drum here that I've been using for a couple of years just to store some shovels and some random stakes and handles and stuff in in our garden shed. And I cut it a few inches below the surface to cover the septic tank hatch, which has been unearthed for at least a month now. Now that I have everything hooked up to the septic tank and we're actually using it, I don't want anyone to accidentally access the tank or drop anything in there. So now this is covered up and graded and we're ready to move on to the next few tasks. So please stick around. Behind me on the floor is my EG4 charge verter. I think there's a newer model on the market now. This is the one from last year. I have to use my big split phase tri-fuel generator to try to recharge these, but that's not an inverter generator. So the sine wave is not pure and it could potentially destroy electronics. And because my entire solar system is essentially electronics, it's better to fry this thing, which is relatively cheap compared to the inverter, if anything's gonna be fried. So this can interpret that dirty power and push it into my batteries to charge it. Since I don't have any solar panels hooked up to my charge controller yet, I'm going to fire up the generator, plug it in here. I know you're not supposed to have everything draped on the floor like this, but as you can see, this is an exterior plug with an adapter to plug into my 50 amp cable here. And this will be mounted on the outside of the building. And this wire is just going to go through the wall. I took the factory plug off the end. They are nice enough to have a bolt-on plug instead of like a, I don't know, more like formed and melted one that you'd have to cut off. So I can always put this back on. So let's see if this works. It's been a few weeks since I did my pressure test for the underground portion of our propane lines. I mentioned that the risers that come up out of the ground are three quarter inch. Now I need to adapt them down to a suitable size to attach the regulator on one end and the hot water heater on the other. I always use two pipe wrenches when dealing with gas lines. I also have some yellow pipe dope as well as yellow Teflon tape. Here is a close up now of a propane tank next to the regulator. I purposely chose this height, so it would be the same height as the propane tank. Now moving on to the other end, I'm taking off the 3 quarter inch cap, and I'm replacing it with a reducer to bring it down to the half inch pipe before turning 90 degrees towards the building and entering through a hole in the wall. I always wrap the Teflon tape around the threads first, followed by a thin coat of yellow pipe dope. Then I start the threading by hand before I switch over to the dual pipe wrench strategy. Here you can see I'm preparing to drill the hole through the wall by placing just a scrap piece of trash over the pipe to make sure no metal shavings or sawdust goes down the gas pipe. I don't know if it would actually be problematic, but it's best to keep pipes filled with only their intended material, which in this case is gas, so I don't want any solids in there. But I'm using a cheap step-up bit from Harbor Freight that's more than enough to get through this thin gauge of metal you can see here that the 90 degree fitting doesn't perfectly line up, but it's very close and the dirt is still soft from when I trenched it. So I'm able to kind of move the fitting around to exactly where I need to get it perfectly aligned with the hole. It's about time to start packing up to head back to South Carolina to visit with my family before the next trip, which will be a few days away. Here, you can see I have the regulator. This took me a long time to figure out. All this stuff has to be to code, 
because Virginia has statewide building codes and it all requires inspections. The inspector told me my next inspection would be the final. He didn't mention inspecting the trench for gas lines or anything like that. So I hope this isn't too premature. But the struggle I had was finding a regulator that uses half inch pipe. After a lot of research, I finally figured out that after the regulator, the pipe can actually be bigger because the propane tank will be high pressure and the pipes will act as a reservoir that's low pressure. And after the regulator, the volume makes up for the lack of pressure. I was able to use these camper related accessories, even though they have three eighths and my water heater manufacturer mandates half inch pipe for everything. So half inch pipe is fine for the rest of the place. It's half inch inside diameter underground. The risers that the manufacturer makes go up to three quarters and then I reduce them back down. The only place that's gonna be three eighths is right there after the regulator. And then way over here, this goes down to half inch, goes through the wall. And this one inch piece of PEX perfectly accommodates the outside diameter of a half inch threaded iron pipe. And I'm using this as a sleeve because the metal has an abrasive edge. And instead of doing the crazy trim technique that I did for all these other penetrations, I opted to just drill a hole since the pipe is circular anyway. I can use some big stretch sealant to seal out the rest of that hole. And then on the inside here, there's a 90 and then it's going to be converted to this flexible line before it goes up here to the sediment filter and finally to feed the propane on demand hot water heater. Here's some bonus footage for you all. I did end up getting the water heater permanently installed. And as you can see here, we have the hot water flowing. Our fancy water heater shows the incoming temperature, the outcoming temperature, as well as the flow rate. And then out here, this flue shoots a lot of heat out. Well, I have to get going. So I hope to see you guys here next time on Kind Heart Homestead. Bye. Thank <music> you.